In the 19th century France built a new colonial empire second only to the British Empire. It was humiliated in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870–71, which marked the rise of Germany to dominance in Europe. France was on the winning side of the First World War, but fared poorly in the Second World War. It fought losing wars in Indochina ending in 1954 and Algeria ending in 1958. The Fourth Republic collapsed and the Fifth Republic began in 1958 to the present. Under Charles de Gaulle it tried to block American and British influence on the European community. Since 1945 France has been a founding member of the United Nations, of NATO, and of the European Coal and Steel Community the European Union's predecessor. As a charter member of the United Nations, France holds one of the permanent seats in the Security Council and is a member of most of its specialized and related agencies. France is also a founding member of the Union for the Mediterranean and the La Francophonie and plays a key role, both in regional and in international affairs. Fifth Republic since 1981 François Mitterrand, 1981–1995 François Mitterrand, a socialist, emphasized European unity and the preservation of France's special relationships with its former colonies in the face of Anglo-Saxon influence. A part of the enacted policies was formulated in the Socialist Party's 110 Propositions for France, the electoral program for the 1981 presidential election. He had a warm and effective relationship with the conservative German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. They promoted French-German bilateralism in Europe and strengthened military cooperation between the two countries. Topic: <inaudible> Jacques Chirac. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Nicolas Sarkozy. Shortly after taking office, President Sarkozy began negotiations with Colombian President Álvaro Uribe and the left-wing guerrilla FARC, regarding the release of hostages held by the rebel group, especially Franco-Colombian politician Ingrid Betancourt. According to some sources, Sarkozy himself asked for Uribe to release FARC's Chancellor, Rodrigo Granda. Furthermore, he announced on 24 July 2007, that French and European representatives had obtained the extradition of the Bulgarian nurses detained in Libya to their country. In exchange, he signed with Gaddafi security, health care and immigration pacts, and a $230 million, 168 million euros Milan anti-tank missile sale. The contract was the first made by Libya since 2004, and was negotiated with MBDA, a subsidiary of EADS. Another €128 million Euros contract would have been signed, according to Tripoli, with EADS for a Tetra radio system. The Socialist Party PS and the Communist Party PCF criticized a «state affair» and a «barter» with a «rogue state». The leader of the PS, François Hollande, requested the opening of a parliamentary investigation. On 8 June 2007, during the 33rd G8 summit in Heiligendam, Sarkozy set a goal of reducing French CO2 emissions by 50% by 2050 in order to prevent global warming. He then pushed forward the important socialist figure of Dominique Strauss Kahn as European nominee to the International Monetary Fund. IMF. Critics alleged that Sarkozy proposed to nominate Strauss-Kahn as managing director of the IMF to deprive the Socialist Party of one of its more popular figures. Sarkozy normalized what had been strained relations with NATO. In 2009, France again was a fully integrated NATO member. François Hollande has continued the same policy. Topic: <laughs> François Hollande Socialist François Hollande won election in 2012 as president. He adopted a generally hawkish foreign policy, in close collaboration with Germany in regard to opposing Russian moves against Ukraine, and in sending the military to fight radical Islamists in Africa. He takes a hard line with regard to the Greek debt crisis. 
François Hollande launched two military operations in Africa, Operation Serval in Mali the French armed forces stopped an Islamist takeover of Bamako, the nation's capital city, and Operation Sangaris to restore peace there as tensions between different religious communities had turned into a violent conflict. France was also the first European nation to join the United States in bombing the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Under President Hollande, France's stances on the civil war in Syria and Iran's nuclear program has been described as hawkish. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel Macron, 2017-present. Sophie Meunier in 2017 ponders whether France is still relevant in world affairs. France does not have as much relative global clout as it used to. Decolonization Diminished France's territorial holdings and therefore its influence. Other countries acquired nuclear weapons and built up their armies. The message of universal values carried by French foreign policy has encountered much resistance, as other countries have developed following a different political trajectory than the one preached by France. By the 1990s, the country had become, in the words of Stanley Hoffman, an ordinary power, neither a basket case nor a challenger. Public opinion, especially in the United States, no longer sees France as an essential power. The last time that its foreign policy put France back in the world spotlight was at the outset of the Iraq intervention. With France's refusal to join the U.S. led coalition, in reality, however, France is still a highly relevant power in world affairs. France is a country of major military importance nowadays. France also showed it mattered in world environmental affairs with less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 the Paris Agreement, a global accord to reduce carbon emissions. The election of Trump in 2016 may reinforce demands for France to step in and lead global environmental governance if the U.S. disengages, as the new president has promised. From a variety of policies, polls indicate that American President Barack Obama was highly popular in France, but Donald Trump has been extremely unpopular. Natalie Nougaride argues Yet behind this widespread revulsion lies a diplomatic opportunity. With the United States looking inward and Trump having torn up the traditional foreign policy rule book, Macron, is seeking to reinvigorate the European project as a way of restoring French leadership. French power is no substitute for American power, of course. But with the United States' image, global role, and reliability newly uncertain, Europeans feel a void that someone must fill, and France thinks it should at least try to do just that. International organization participation ACCT, AFDB, ASDB, Australia Group, BDEAC, BIS, CCC, CDB non-regional, CE, CERN, EAPC, EBRD, ECA Associate, ECE, ECLAC, IBE, EMU, ESA, ESCAP, EU, FAO, FZ, G5, G7, G10, IADB, IAEA, IBRD, ICAO, ICC, ICC, ICRM, IDA, IEA, IFAD, IFC, IFRCS, IHO, ILO, IMF, International Maritime Organization, INMARSAT, INOC, Intelsat, Interpol, IOC, IOM, ISO, ITU, ITUC, MINURSO, MIPONUH, MONUC, NOM, GUEST, NATO, NEA, NSG, OS, Observer, OECD, OPCW, OSCE, PC. PCA, SPC, UN, UN Security Council, UNCTAD, UNESCO, UNHCR, UNIDO, UNIFIL, UNIKOM, UNITAR, UNMIBH, UNMIK, UNOMIG, UNRWA, UNTSO, UNU, UPU, WADB, Nonregional, WEU, WFTU, WHO, WIPO, WMO, WTOO, WTRO, Zonger Committee. Topic. International border disputes Madagascar claims Basas da India, Europa Island, Glorioso Islands and Juan de Nova Island Comoros claims Mayotte Mauritius claims Tromlan Island 
Territorial dispute on the boundary between Suriname and French Guiana Territorial claim in Antarctica Adelie land under the Antarctic Treaty System Matthew and Hunter Islands east of New Caledonia claimed by France and Vanuatu Topic. Middle East France established relations with the Middle East during the reign of Louis XIV. To keep Austria from intervening into its plans regarding Western Europe he lent limited support to the Ottoman Empire, though the victories of Prince Eugene of Savoy destroyed these plans. In the 19th century France together with Great Britain tried to strengthen the Ottoman Empire, the now sick man of Europe. To resist Russian expansion, culminating in the Crimean War, France also pursued close relations with the semi-autonomous Egypt. In 1869 Egyptian workers under the supervision of France completed the Suez Canal. A rivalry emerged between France and Britain for control of Egypt, and eventually Britain emerged victorious by buying out the Egyptian shares of the company before the French had time to act. After the unification of Germany in 1871, Germany successfully attempted to co opt France's relations with the Ottomans. In World War I, the Ottoman Empire joined the Central Powers, and was defeated by France and Britain. After the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, France and Britain divided the Middle East between themselves. France received Syria and Lebanon. Topic: 1945 to 1958. These colonies were granted independence after 1945, but France still tried to forge cultural and educational bonds between the areas, particularly with Lebanon. Relationships with Syria are more strained due to the policies of that country. In 2005, France, along with the United States, pressured Syria to evacuate Lebanon. In the post-World War II era French relations with the Arab Middle East reached a very low point. The war in Algeria between Muslim fighters and French colonists deeply concerned the rest of the Muslim world. The Algerian fighters received much of their supplies and funding from Egypt and other Arab powers, much to France's displeasure, most damaging to Franco-Arab relations, however, was the Suez Crisis. It greatly diminished France's reputation in the region. France openly supported the Israeli attack on the Sinai Peninsula, and was working against Nasser, then a popular figure in the Middle East. The Suez Crisis also made France and the United Kingdom look again like imperialist powers attempting to impose their will upon weaker nations. Another hindrance to France's relations with the Arab Middle East was its close alliance with Israel during the 1950s. Topic. De Gaulle's policies This all changed with the coming of Charles de Gaulle to power. De Gaulle's foreign policy was centered around an attempt to limit the power and influence of both superpowers, and at the same time increase France's international prestige. De Gaulle hoped to move France from being a follower of the United States to becoming the leading nation of a large group of non-aligned countries. The nations de Gaulle looked at as potential participants in this group were those in France's traditional spheres of influence, Africa and the Middle East. The former French colonies in eastern and northern Africa were quite agreeable to these close relations with France, these nations had close economic and cultural ties to France, and they also had few other suitors amongst the major powers. This new orientation of French foreign policy also appealed strongly to the leaders of the Arab nations. None of them wanted to be dominated by either of the superpowers, and they supported France's policy of trying to balance the U.S. and the USSR and to prevent either from becoming dominant in the region. The Middle Eastern leaders wanted to be free to pursue their own goals and objectives, and did not want to be chained to either alliance bloc. De Gaulle hoped to use this common foundation to build strong relations between the nations. He also hoped that good relations would improve France's trade with the region. De Gaulle also imagined that these allies would look up to the more powerful French nation, and would look to it in leadership in matters of foreign policy. The end of the Algerian conflict in 1962 accomplished much in this regard. France could not portray itself as a leader of the oppressed nations of the world if it still was enforcing its colonial rule upon another nation. The battle against the Muslim separatists that France waged in favor of the minority of white settlers was an extremely unpopular one throughout the Muslim world. With the conflict raging it would have been close to impossible for France to have had positive relations with the nations of the Middle East. 
The Middle Eastern support for the FLN guerrillas was another strain on relations that the end of the conflict removed. Most of the financial and material support for the FLN had come from the nations of the Middle East and North Africa. This was especially true of Nasser's Egypt, which had long supported the separatists. Egypt is also the most direct example of improved relations after the end of hostilities. The end of the war brought an immediate thaw to Franco Egyptian relations. Egypt ended the trial of four French officers accused of espionage, and France ended its trade embargo against Egypt. In 1967, de Gaulle completely overturned France's Israel policy. De Gaulle and his ministers reacted very harshly to Israel's actions in the Six Day War. The French government and de Gaulle condemned Israel's treatment of refugees, warned that it was a mistake to occupy the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and also refused to recognize the Israeli control of Jerusalem. The French government continued to criticize Israel after the war and de Gaulle spoke out against other Israeli actions, such as the operations against the Palestine Liberation Organization in Lebanon. France began to use its veto power to oppose Israel in the UN, and France sided with the Arab states on almost all issues brought to the international body. Most importantly of all, however, de Gaulle's government imposed an arms embargo on the Israeli state. The embargo was in fact applied to all the combatants, but very soon France began selling weaponry to the Arab states again. As early as 1970 France sold Libya a hundred Dassault Mirage fighter jets. However, after 1967 France continued to support Israel's right to exist, as well as Israel's many preferential agreements with France and the European Economic Community. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign aid In the second half of the 20th century, France increased its expenditures in foreign aid greatly, to become second only to the United States in total aid amongst the Western powers and first on a per capita basis. By 1968 France was paying out $855 million per year in aid far more than either West Germany or the United Kingdom. The vast majority of French aid was directed towards Africa and the Middle East, usually either as a lever to promote French interests or to help with the sale of French products e arms sales. France also increased its expenditures on other forms of aid sending out skilled individuals to developing countries to provide technical and cultural expertise. The combination of aid money, arms sales, and diplomatic alignments helped to erase the memory of the Suez Crisis and the Algerian War in the Arab world and France successfully developed amicable relationships with the governments of many of the Middle Eastern states. Nasser and de Gaulle, who shared many similarities, cooperated on limiting American power in the region. Nasser proclaimed France as the only friend of Egypt in the West. France and Iraq also developed a close relationship with business ties, joint military training exercises, and French assistance in Iraq's nuclear program in the 1970s. France improved relations with its former colony Syria, and eroded cultural links were partially restored. In terms of trade France did receive some benefits from the improved relations with the Middle East. French trade with the Middle East increased by over 50% after de Gaulle's reforms. The weaponry industries benefited most as France soon had lucrative contracts with many of the regimes in the Middle East and North Africa, though these contracts account for a negligible part of France's economy. De Gaulle had hoped that by taking a moderate path and not strongly supporting either side France could take part in the Middle East peace process between Israel and the Arab nations. Instead it has been excluded from any major role. Bilateral relations <inaudible> Africa France plays a significant role in Africa, especially in its former colonies, through extensive aid programs, commercial activities, military agreements, and cultural impact. In those former colonies where the French presence remains important, France contributes to political, military, and social stability. Many think that French policy in Africa, particularly where British interests are also involved, is susceptible to what is known as Fashoda syndrome. Others have criticized the relationship as neocolonialism under the name Francafrique, stressing France's support of various dictatorships, among others, Omar Bongo, Idris Deby, and Denis Sassou Nguesso. Topic Americas
Topic: Asia. France has extensive political and economical relations with Asian countries, including China, India, Japan, South Korea and Southeast Asia as well as an increasing presence in regional fora. France was instrumental in launching the Asia-Europe Meeting process which could eventually emerge as a competitor to APEC. France is seeking to broaden its commercial presence in China and will pose a competitive challenge to U.S. business, particularly in aerospace, high-tech, and luxury markets. In Southeast Asia, France was an architect of the Paris Peace Accords, which ended the conflict in Cambodia. France does not have formal diplomatic relationships with North Korea. North Korea, however, maintains a delegation, not an embassy nor a consulate, near Paris. As most countries, France does not recognize nor have formal diplomatic relationships with Taiwan due to its recognition of China. However, Taiwan maintains a representation office in Paris, which is similar to an embassy. Likewise, the French Institute in Taipei has an administrative consular section that delivers visas and fulfills other missions normally dealt with by diplomatic outposts. Europe France has maintained its status as key power in Western Europe because of its size, location, strong economy, membership in European organizations, strong military posture and energetic diplomacy. France generally has worked to strengthen the global economic and political influence of the EU and its role in common European defence and collective security. France supports the development of a European Security and Defence Identity as the foundation of efforts to enhance security in the European Union. France cooperates closely with Germany and Spain in this endeavour. Oceania See also Causes of World War I Deployments of the French military Evolution of the French Empire French colonial empire French colonization of the Americas Francization History of France International relations 1814 Overseas departments and territories of France List of French possessions and colonies List of diplomatic missions in France List of diplomatic missions of France Visa requirements for French citizens <laughs>